I used to do lots of things. I used to do things and I'd say things and Jesus I was evil. Say things and break things and Jesus I was evil. I never should. Cool. Yeah, I mean, you know, we've all known bounty hunters, but uh, yeah. All right, cool. Welcome to episode 24 mm. of the Reckless Muse cast. Welcome. I'm yeah. Ben, the Jersey Devil's attorney, D'Alessio. And I'm Joe. Um, yeah, Garza. Uh, let's keep it simple. <laughs> keep it simple. Yeah, I don't think we have two nickname guys. That, that might get a little obnoxious. Yeah. Um, so, Joe, actually, I wanted to start off this episode uh doing something i think that's that's really important to me oh, and great. i think <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that we should start doing air acknowledgements uh that mm. we we acknowledge and recognize that we are using stolen air on oh these, yeah. on these radio waves um, yes. stolen indigenous air yes and that uh we uh, from coast to coast yeah. i don't know who uh, was there first in Southern California, but over here it was the Lenny Lenape. Oh. And I, I think that it's good to to recognize that the air that we are currently breathing and mm -hmm. using that's traveling through our vocal cords to make uh, this podcast is um, a colonial and imperialist air. Yeah, you can do that. I'm just, I'm hanging out here in Azatlan with uh, you know, where my uh, native uh, <laughs> indigenous oh, yeah. ancestors are. Yeah, so yeah, um, yeah I'm, I'm I'm breathing my, my ancestors' air. So yeah, they were like, they were, oh, would they be considered Mexicans yet or no? I'm not sure. I'm it'd not be sure. like all that new Spain. Um, I don't know. You guys were like, cutting off heads and rolling them down pyramids and shit. So you guys would kind of do the same thing. Yeah, but to our but to our own people though. That's true. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. That's good. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> when when genocide is self-inflicted. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um yeah. Okay. But uh yeah uh, but you know I'll, I'll think of something to uh, to uh apologize uh to to acknowledge next next episode. Sure. I, but I, I yeah, I, I think I'm quite innocent right now when it comes well, to air. Well, you're not. But uh, so where where should we start? Because today we have a few topics that are all kind of interrelated, sort of. Yeah, yeah. So so but, sort of like like the general overarching theme is sort of like this this um, like the current trend to destroy. Uh, or at least, you know, get rid of or de-emphasize important aspects of our cultural history, sure. um, art and, and culture and, and all that stuff. Um, and it, it, even though I said, like, it's a new trend, I mean, honestly, like, this has been going on for a long time from different mm -hmm. different aspects, different different political factions. Right now, we're experiencing a lot from the left, but, uh, I mean, you know, the right's been doing this, and it's been happening well, in other cultures. Well, we are, and the left has definitely been highlighted, and we do a lot of that, and rightfully yeah. so. They're, they're, yeah. they're, they're batshit crazy, but uh, I do think one of the themes of this episode is going to be that the right kind of flies under the radar a little more than maybe yeah. Uh, yeah. we give it credit for, and we right. should um, acknowledge that, yeah. because it's also... And when we did talk about this last episode or two episodes ago, um, or three episodes ago even, where... I think a lot of it is because a lot of the left craziness in terms of, I mean, canceling is, I guess, the broad term now, censoring, yeah, erasing, deplatforming. Depla de yeah. It's all the same thing. And yeah. a lot of that does occur in, in major cities. So I think that's why it gets highlighted, like San Francisco and Seattle and New York. Yeah. Uh, those three we're going to talk about specifically. Yep. But the right wing, a lot of it happens, I think, in more um, suburban and rural areas. Yeah, yeah. For instance, uh, we talked about the mouse, uh, uh, the graphic novel, graphic, yeah. graphic novel being, I, I looked up so that, so, you know, going into that, we weren't exactly sure we were saying tenant school board, Tennessee. So it was the County school board, I guess. in I think it's McKinn County. Yeah. yeah. There's less than 55,000 people in that County, yeah. Yeah. In the entire County. So, right, right. so it, again, doesn't mean it's not, it, it, it's okay. It's not okay. But mm -hmm. I think that's why it flies under the radar because the entire county, that's like a neighborhood in Los Angeles. Yeah. yeah. 55,000 people. <laughs> right. So yeah. um, even I think 
my state, New Jersey's smallest county and population, I think is still like a hundred thousand mm-hmm. would be like the one right below me in Cape May, yeah. I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so that, so that's what we're talking about here. But anyway, um, uh, where do you want to start with, uh, cause right now, I don't know if it's book ban week or that was recently. Um, if you want to talk about the, the kind of school school bands, or if you want to do more of the statues, yeah yeah for a while so so the list that i came up with and and these are all yeah. fairly recent within the last few years um classical music like there was some article that was mm. published and I'll, I'll just give a brief overview and we just kind of but you know jump in whenever but there's an article that was published yeah. in the times.co.uk called why mozart is a singular symbol of the white patriarchy oh, boy. um <laughs> and i know you love Ma- i know you love Mart- mozart yeah so that one especially hurt um, there's other one, and, and I wrote a medium article a while uh, back about this. Um, what was Yale. their argument? What was their argument about Mozart? Oh, about the Mozart thing. Um, yeah. because usually when we're talking about the great composers, the great classical composers, we refer to them by their last names. Um, but when it comes to more modern composers, okay. especially if they are of color or if they are female or whatever, we refer to them by their full names, and that's problematic for some reason. To, oh, okay. Um, yeah. is that true? No, so so I mean the, the reason why we refer to Mozart as Mozart and not Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart to differentiate him from Leopold Mozart or his sister Nana Mozart is because Mozart, like the Mozart that we refer to, he's the most famous Mozart. Like ninety nine point nine percent of the times when somebody says, "Oh, I'm I'm working on a Mozart piece," like it's it, people don't go, "Oh, oh, you mean you're studying Leopold Mozart, his dad?" Because his dad was also a composer. So, yeah. No, nobody gives a shit about Leopold. It's, yeah. it's Wolfgang. Um, but yeah, is but, it but true I, that I, his dad his dad actually wrote a lot of his early? Uh, compositions or, or whatever no mozart wrote everything ever did no, it I, I, okay no no but i do know that his dad exploited the hell out he was of like him five yeah. well yeah i mean uh, uh, you would too if that was your son i would yeah i know <laughs> i'm not blaming him i'm just saying no but uh, um but yeah for some reason like they, they, and there are a few other articles about this where they're bothered that if there's a composer of color or a female composer that we refer to them by their full name but first of all i mean first like most people don't listen to listen to contemporary classical music they probably don't listen to classical music at all. So it's sort so it's sort of like, oh, like, are, you, are you listening to a Williams piece? It's like, wait, which Williams are you talking I, about? Yeah. I, no one says Elfman, right? Don't say Danny Elfman. Yeah, because or, like Danny Elfman. Like, yeah. Yeah. So it's like, not just uh, th- I think that's just a time and there weren't women or men of color making Yeah, up until like I don't know, like then. yeah, up and until like the early nineteen hundreds when you started to see more of that happening. Right. Um, so I, it's more just like a precedence. It's like, uh, and, and I will say that, you know, that there are some composers who have, who are married uh, to women who are also very talented composers, but it's like, I'm sorry, you did not produce as much as your husband. For example, Clara Schumann, um, mm. uh, there were a few others, but sorry, it's like, again, your husband was the most famous and important and influential person. So when we say I'm studying a, show, a Schumann piece or I'm going to a Schumann concert, it's referring yeah. to your husband. I'm sorry. Um, okay. <laughs> Um, and I mean, like the society was patriarchal. Yeah, exactly. Back, like it, right. that's not that's just history. I mean, right. okay, it, yeah. it just was. Like, right, right. All right. Um, but I mean, you know, we have Cher and Madonna, and you know that doesn't. Uh, that of yeah. course they ignore that. Um, <laughs> Obviously, right. It was like but, yeah, it was like the Beatles, like the four white guys in the rock band or whatever. It's like, what right. about all the rock bands that aren't that? That have right. women and black guitarists and lead singers and yeah. all no. different. Yeah, it was like, well, that doesn't fit the narrative. Yeah, anyway. so that's that's one example that I brought up of yeah. of just like this thing that happened a long time ago. We need to find a way to dig it up and be offended by it and smear it and sure. make make it more diverse and inclusive and equitable. And it's like, no, that th- it's not solving any yeah. problems. Like, I don't know. It, it's the. Uh, I mean, again, this is like a minor thing, but it is sort of like it, it is kind of going into that that you know, the, this current trend of anything yeah. associated with dead straight white men who were impactful. Um, we need to find a way to tar and feather it in some way. And you're always going to find some, something like problematic by today's standards, if yeah. there's any record of it. And right. uh, I don't know, they're going to be doing the same shit in the future with things that are going on now that we think are so progressive and it might right, right. regress. It might totally become like the invert. I see that more actually. I, I, there is like, I think people assume that we're always just going to get more progressive and that's a good thing. It's like, no, if you look, I forget who wrote about this. It was kind of during 
the craziness of like maybe towards the tail end of the craziness of the great awakening. Mm-hmm. Um, but someone was like, no, this can get out of hand. Look at like the French philosophers of the 1960s, yeah, like, yeah. like very mainstream ones like Foucault and yeah. Sartre and Simone de Beauvoir even who were like totally not only okay with, but promoting like sex with minors. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, no, that's progressive, like progressivism gone nuts. Yeah. And I mean, the conservative, conservatism of the 80s was a complete like total response to the liberalism of the 60s which turned into the mayhem of the 70s yeah yeah um, which was a total shit show and then you have the rise of modern american conservatism which really is only starting to change i feel like today yeah, like yeah. now we have like kind of the trump and post-trump or might not even be post-trump depending on what happens but like <laughs> I know, there yeah, is yeah. there is a rebranding of conservatism yeah, yeah. that and then there was like the 2000s which was the I still associate that very much with like neocon conservatism. Yes. Um, and I think that's a good segue into, cause I, a lot of like reading some of these articles that yeah. I sent, that yeah. kind of remind me of the two thousands. Uh, um, yeah. If you want to, let's just want to get into the book bands. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, yeah. Okay. So like the Atlantic article and I give the Atlantic, I mean, I don't cause they're kind of a trash rag now too, for the most part, like uh, to take a step back, the Atlantic was like my number one, go-to yeah. publication for years like right. i love that was my go on go on my computer what like what's on the atlantic probably yeah. all throughout law school um and it was like it seemed liberal but not crazy and they just like most yeah. things went off the deep end yeah. i kind of felt like i saw that coming it seemed like everything was anti-christian everything was anti-white every like it, there was no kind yeah. of diversity yeah. in that but this article i give credit in the sense that like the first for, so it's so it's called let me just read the title so this is read the books that schools want to ban these 14 titles have been under attack um for doing exactly what they're supposed to do this is by emma Serapo, uh and this came out on the first of the month so february 1st 2022 and the first book they do have here is to kill a mockingbird which you know they don't really shy away from it like this is a liberal progressive banning yeah, yeah. um for like racial slurs and perception of Atticus Finch as a white savior. And and obviously that's a dumb at like, it's an incredible book. As I point out before, uh, PBS during the great American read, like this was America's number one book, like as far yeah. as, you know, any poll can go, but this was a big expansive list that yeah. this was the number one book for Americans, which mm-hmm. is like, that's a really good thing. Yeah. Right. That this yeah. is the number one book, a book of showing the horrors of, you know, slavery is easy because slavery is so horrible facially. But this was kind of like this was the depression yes. um, post reconstruction in the South and uh, showed the horrors of that. And yeah. to make that America's favorite book, I mean, that's a great thing. And then yeah. you have you have it's not Seattle, but it's outside like a Seattle suburb school district banning it for the same kind of bullshit that we highlight all the time right um so i give the atlanta credit for for not only putting that first but for even highlighting that one the rest though i will say i didn't click on every single one in the snippets like you can kind of tell is this a right-wing ban or a left-wing ban yeah for instance yeah. the the handmaid's tale you know it's they're saying it's anti-christian and um sexual violence yeah. and criticism of religion so when that's challenged that's usually going to be from the right because it's a very much a uh left wing especially now since the show yeah, um, yeah. It's like the holocaust and nazism it gets brought up all the fucking time whenever there's anti-abortion thing for just being completely blown out of proportion yeah, um, yeah. you you have Alyssa milano and and her ilk kind of dressing in the in the red uh, with the whatever white hoods yeah, yeah yeah the white hoods or the habits or whatever they would be right, um, right but anyway so so this is a list of books that are being banned and to be honest the vast majority of these are, are mouses on here yep. um are it looks like for i would think maybe right wing is always the best term but for the same kind of like think of the children type uh reasons yeah uh, like they, they have looking for alaska gets challenged a lot uh which is john green who i love um, because it has young people, you know, doing sexual acts. Yeah. So that does bring me to the one on here that I could see myself having a problem with. Mm. And this is gender queer. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, are you familiar with this with this book? It's a graphic novel. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm at least somewhat familiar with the controversy around yeah. it. This made like a months. huge. This was this like made the rounds on social yeah. media. Yeah. Um, and the vast majority of it, I think, is fine. Like, I don't. Yeah, I don't yeah. see any issue. It's really a, a couple, and this gets to one. So it's a graphic novel and not a novel, and I do think that makes a difference because I, I don't know. I think reading about, let's say teenagers having oral sex and then like seeing illustrations of it like there is a difference there yeah yeah right i, I yeah. don't know like i'm i'm actually thinking this out and i did go kind of back and forth on this but that's not the biggest deal to me if they're both you know teens like i, I don't care right. what their genders are the whole thing is that they're well they're not straight that's like the whole point, right right but but i i don't i don't even know to say they're gay whatever they're queer so let's just say that so yeah, yeah. whatever right? it is kind of weird to see you know queer teens literally like sucking dick in, yeah, in yeah. a book that's in a school okay i could see the issues with it whatever to be honest a lot of the teens are doing that anyway watch euphoria um, right, right. But, which I don't. It's basically I, a documentary. I, yeah. Yeah. I, well, I've heard Euphoria doesn't make yeah. you want to not have children. They're all sucking and fucking and doing drugs yeah, and yeah. stuff. But anyway, my issue with the book really only comes in where I do see a slippery slope type um, issue with yeah. uh, like pedophilia. Yeah. Because the main, the protagonist is like, um fantasizing about some greek urn that's a real thing it's in a museum in london i believe yeah. or england somewhere i think london and it does show you know a man like very clearly a bearded man like a, a leonidas type looking character with a yeah, big yeah. pointy beard and stuff and like a young boy and right, he's right. grabbing stick or something they're embracing his grabbing stick and i don't think we should teens should be reading books about pedophilia in that sort of way like where it's not right, right where it's not like okay it's part of the plot and it's obviously a bad thing like a child yeah. was abused by a parent or something like that sure. yeah. this is like a fantasy type thing and I, I, again maybe i'm reading i didn't read the book i literally looked at some of the pictures and tried to get some context right but right. that seems like it could be a problem teens are like you know very impressionable and especially in these communities there's been a long history of this sort of thing and it's actually what i think like got milo yiannopoulos quote-unquote like legitimately canceled yeah like, yeah don't hear from him, him anymore yeah, yeah. And there are a lot of reasons and milo i think got blown out of proportion too but i think he did some fucked up stuff also yeah, yeah um, definitely. but he would say like no this is just part of the gay community like this is very right. common a lot like i had yeah again, i'm speaking for him here like i had these sorts of experiences they are more you know clandestine and um there would always be older men kind of showing you the ropes and you would have sexual encounters with them that were illegal um, right right so i don't i think that's where i would like if i'm trying to put myself in the shoes of a parent yeah and it's not at the same time also like understanding kids are gonna be exposed to stuff unless you have filters on they can go on pornhub right away and see right not, but they can't see or they're not supposed to see pedophilia like that is illegal Child yeah, yeah. porn is not protected under the First Amendment. Right, um, right. It's it's one of the few things actually that are facially illegal. Like there's yeah. no argument to be made. Um, and, yeah, I, I I feel similarly about that. Where where yeah. it, it's not so much the specific subject matter. Like like for me, like when it comes to teaching kids about this stuff, like it, it it's it's neutral depending on on what the context is and what what's the subject of. Yeah. Uh, of, of the class or why they would be teaching this if it's it, it um like you know i would not be bothered if i were a parent i would not be bothered necessarily if i if i knew that um my child my 15 my 14 or 15 year old was reading a book that had pedophilia involved or or oral sex or something like that i would be like okay but what's what's the context of it like what's the purpose yeah of it? yeah and um, that was in that was in the tony morrison book that was there i think right, something right. blue eyes yeah and because there is incest and i think pedophilia yeah. and that and um you know but that's part of the plot that's like something they have to overcome and show right. some pain and suffering and stuff like that like, that's different than showing an illustration of a child yeah yeah like fantasizing about it in a way yeah that to me you start to get like i don't think that's but then it's not about being necessary i really do battle with like i really was thinking this over I, this yeah, is the one yeah. thing that i'm like i really could see this being like you know what go 
buy it that like the book can exist again yeah, well, yeah, isn't, course, yeah. remember this isn't like we ban the book from society this is banning from a school in a right. curriculum even yeah. um that i could see it being a problem because yeah, yeah. i don't think we should start normalizing uh, pedophilia exactly or, yeah, or yeah. pedophilia that's yeah pederasty is just like boys and men right but pedophilia is just adults and children right I think right, so. right yeah I think so Anyway, um, because and and in context of society right now, and then we can move on from this. But that, like, I feel like I'm seeing a lot of normalization of pedophilia, and I'm, it's really starting to disturb me. It's I, I'm I'm seeing more and more conversations of it uh, on Twitter. Yeah. I hope that's just weird subgroups and nothing more on Twitter. But I I sure. don't know if I, I, every once in a while, like I'll see a story about something in like you know a, a teacher who's saying pedophilia is not that bad. And I'm like, uh, yeah, okay, the professor. Right, okay. Yeah, there's some, a professor. At, yeah, yeah and it's like and they're like i get this some of the distinctions they're trying to make but it's like right, right. these are these are people's children which could be a yeah. nice segue into the school board thing we're going to talk about right, briefly right. but don't fuck with people's children like don't yes. like and it, one you shouldn't do it period because right, right. but also it's gonna it's gonna come back to bite you and yeah maybe we where, just shouldn't start normalizing that yeah and that that's where it gets worse squirrely for me uh where it's like it's one thing if, if you see a college professor discussing like hey you know we you know there are there are aspects of pedophilia that we should address and we can't just oh well, it's like, okay fine but it's like when i see elementary school teachers saying like oh look pederast you know pedophilia is something yeah. it's it's something that happens and it's like okay no 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 i don't want that person around my five-year-old like <laughs> yeah well of course right yeah. that's but, but again, I, I, I have some, no idea how common that is, though. So you know. yeah, it's it's just this book made a big, and I think some of the a lot of what I saw on the internet when this was really making the rounds was the oral, you know, the depictions of oral sex. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, all right, is that poor? Like that is pornographic. I don't think we had pornographic books in school. I I can't I, remember. It's. To I me, looked really hard and like couldn't find right. It. Like like <laughs> if we did, we wouldn't have known about it. It's like, yeah, yeah. but kids of the internet, like yeah, there's yeah. you could pull up porn in a split second right, and right. find you could start watching the first like porn video available on whatever site you go on yeah. and watch it for the rest of your life, and yeah. you won't even like get through a fraction of the porn out there. Yeah. yeah. Um, or you know you might say challenge accepted but um, <laughs> <laughs> but th at the same time it's like yeah but okay that yeah, that's yeah. the that that's the child the child can go take out uh, the teen can go take out that book somewhere just maybe it shouldn't be in like the school's library or something, yeah exactly or, or, or in the school's curriculum like that right, i totally right. see but everything else yeah getting back to there there's is this uh conservative kind of book burning which is really disturbing to me yes um and i don't know has it just been going on this whole time i guess so i guess it has been going wouldn't be on surprised i'm i i'm mean, yeah I, I definitely remember growing up and hearing lots of stories about um con, you, you know like like the more religious right getting bothered by books yeah. about evolution or, or e even just basic yeah. sort of like um you know, like first year sex ed type stuff where it's like, oh, come on. Like at some point we got to talk about it. So, what kind know. of school, what what would you say, what kind of school did you go to? Like, would you say it was really liberal or kind of moderate or did it have like a bent? Or uh, for high school or? Yeah, I guess just your school district. I don't know if you moved around. Uh, Yeah, no, I, I, I always, uh, I spent most of my, my school years in, in the Bay Area, in, in San Jose. Right. Um, right, right. Yeah, they were probably, I think they were pretty liberal. I mean, we did study, we did read the, the People's History of the United States by Howard Zinn. So that's probably. Uh, What's that? Oh, that's, that's, that's kind of. Like, I didn't realize it at the time because I didn't care about politics. But, but now looking back, it's like, oh, that is more of like a pretty radical left-leaning. Oh, is it? Uh, interpretation of American history. Oh, okay. okay. Um, I mean, I, I I, I, it, it's been a long time since I've read it. But, but looking back, I'm like, yeah, I can kind of see how this is more of like the. Um, like a 1619 um, project type thing kind of yeah, yeah. I, I i don't know if it's been necessarily criticized for being historically in inaccurate but i do know that that it, it was more from like this is this is american history from the from the oppressed side from the oppressed sure. perspective sort of thing yeah like critical yeah critical theory type yeah because yeah because yeah. i hear i mean people who are like oh we don't talk about race enough or we don't like <laughs> you know it's all colonial learn like not where i grew up like yeah. my school i'm i mean we were told 
all the time from a young age how privileged we were how great we had it and we did for for a lot of people i also felt bad for the people like like i grew up i would say very upper middle class and i grew up with some extremely wealthy kids like yeah. really wealthy and some like lower middle class kids and just like there's a bunch everyone into a group yeah, just yeah. to so that you can go after the really rich kids kind of seems shitty and some kids were like i don't live that way like my parents are like that but anyway um we were told all the time that we were privileged we had classes about all different types of people and we yeah. learned about you know, we had like, uh, I, I feel like we had what was called then, I don't think this would exist anymore, like the Gay Straight Alliance, mm, like yeah. back when my brother was, like the late 90s, early 2000s, Yeah. Um, which I don't, I think was not that common at the time. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I don't know, when I hear everyone's like, we have to decolonize our, our edu you know, our education system, I'm like, what, what schools are we talking about here? But then again, I was in North Jersey school, it was um, probably not the norm in most school districts in this country but yeah for for, for my, my public education it was more kind of ghetto mexican <laughs> school <Nice>. so uh <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right because cool. yeah because california even passed like uh they have like i don't know if quotas are the right word but like you have to teach certain topics yeah right? they, they recently like in the last year or two they they uh uh I think public schools or, or at least like, like, like the, the UC, like the, the university of California college system. Sure. Um, like you, you ha like you have to take at least three courses in ethnic studies. Like there. Yes. That was the ethnic yeah. studies. And I yeah. think that was a big thing when California did that. Yeah. It's yeah. pretty stupid. <laughs> I, I, I think it's good to, I, well, is it in addition to, or is it where like my school, at least it was like, it was in addition to other things. It wasn't yeah. replacing. It's like, it's not right. replacing math. To learn if it's in addition to, I'm cool with it. I got no problems yeah. with it. But, it, but my, my, electives, my, like, but because this is Gavin uh, Newsom, I'm kind of like, ah, it's probably getting rid of like math and science and writing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's getting rid of all the important <laughs> shit. The, yeah, exactly. So that that's obviously not cool. But anyway, yeah. speaking of um, school boards, let's, yeah. So there was a, recently a California has gone recall crazy, and I kind of <laughs> yeah. love it because when I was there, when I was visiting you there, uh, well, I, I never looked up what happened with the city council member in like the Venice area. Oh yeah, so I I didn't look too much into it, but I did stumble upon an article recently. Um, I know that, uh, and and I don't know if this is part of the recall effort for him but i do know that people are upset with him right now because um the homeless the homeless problem in venice is getting yeah. really out of hand and not too yeah. long ago yeah. they um uh some homeless people started a trash fire and then it, like some lo some some local businesses caught on fire because of it um and i know that he was being very lenient about it yeah. um, so i know that's um that, that happened very recently um but i don't know it, but it, it seems like he's just kind of a push well, what's he what's he supposed to do though i'm not sure I think he's supposed to go out there and tell the homeless people. Like, like, like don't get me around. wrong. Like, I mean, his voting, it, it depends how he voted. Yeah. Like, yeah. isn't that the police's job? Now, if he's hamstringing the police, that's different, right? I um, believe so. Like, 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 I don't think, he, I don't think people were, were bothered. Like, like, why aren't you personally handling this? But I, I, yeah. I, I think it had something to do with some initiative that he was in favor of that was. Sure. Yeah. That, and that's probably it. Yeah. I need to look that up. I forget his name. Something with a B, right? I think so. And that whole neighborhood, man, was like, yeah. Like oh. that, like a lot, of, like recall this guy. I'm like this guy's fucked. Like these yeah. people, these rich Venetian Isle Isle people are pissed yeah. off. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but anyway, so but we're gonna talk about the San Francisco school board that recently had recall election. Um, and let's just say it didn't, didn't go well for the school board. <laughs> oh no, yeah. I'm 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 happy as hell being coming yeah, from the Bay too. Area. I'm just like, oh yeah. good, fucking finally. These and people, like, even London London Breed, the 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 mayor of San Francisco, even yeah. she was cool. She was on board with it. Well, and it was just, she, she was. was. Yeah. She yes, she was, but she also put her finger to the wind and yeah, saw yeah. where it's blowing, and she yeah, wants yeah. to be reelected. So, right. I, I don't know. I'm sure if it was still politically advantageous for her, she would have been supporting, you know, renaming yeah. Abraham Lincoln Elementary School, whatever. Oh it yeah, is. yeah, yeah. Uh, but to you know marcus garvey elementary school but um which would be a fine school too but uh so they they recalled as many as they could yeah. uh they, they could only recall three people because the yeah. rest couldn't 
weren't there long enough to be recalled, but I right, right. bet your ass that if they were eligible to be recalled, they, they would have been recalled. Oh, yeah. And and it was overwhelmingly. It was, it was not it was close. Like, it was like, I think it was like 75 to 79% in favor of, of, of yeah. getting rid of them, which is great. Yeah. And if you haven't followed this at all, you know, just do a, just do a internet search and yeah. you will see what these monsters had been doing instead of making sure Teaching. children get educated. <laughs> yeah, and then yeah. here's, here's the lesson from all this. Do not piss off Asian parents yeah, oh, yeah. because they, you know, this is stereotyping, but a lot of them come to this country. They work their fucking asses off yeah. to give the next generation, like all immigrant populations, right? Yeah. They don't always have a firm grasp on the language. Some do, some don't. They work their asses off to make the next generation better. And then those kids work their asses off because they know what their parents are doing. Right. And then you start calling a school that's 60% Asian, 15% white and the rest, you know, the rest white supremacist and they're like what the fuck are you talking about right, right um i think it's is it lowell high school in san francisco which is to me it sounds kind of like the stuyvesant of new york city mm. which i mean it's it's i believe it's public but you have to get admitted in so you have to mm. test in yeah. so therefore both schools are heavily asian like very right. asian yeah. um and that's their criteria um and so th that's how I, I I think they're like equivalents, but that that's was one of the like, schools yeah. that they started changing, you know, to desegregate, to not desegregate, but to decolonize, you know, the admissions process and all that was just like yeah, they amazing. wanted to turn into a lottery instead of like an admissions based, okay, like a merit okay. based thing, yeah, which is like defeats the purpose of <laughs> yeah, the exactly. school, right? <laughs> so, uh, um, uh, so I I think. This is a strong, you know, I think one of the first hit because I, I was losing my shit a little there in 2020. Yeah. I was yeah, like, yeah. I, I, I honestly, it was like, am I wrong here? Like, right, am I right. the one? Who, and no, I, I was, I was right. I was right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it just took some time. Um, and I think the first kind of blowback, major blowback was Glenn Youngkin winning mayor yeah. excuse me governor of virginia yeah. not that the whole critical race theory thing was the biggest thing there but it was like educating children yeah no it was definitely yeah it was definitely a big part yeah, of it. yeah i think critical race theory was part of that and a lot of parents waking up to be like wait what are they teaching our kids like yeah. we're paying taxes for what yeah to learn you know to learn that privilege and bias is, and yeah um, but I think more of it was like, no, you shut down schools for a year and a half. Yeah, and yeah. now and instead of working to get those schools reopened and to teach children uh, who come from all different backgrounds who maybe don't have laptops yeah. or even safe environments at home or that are yeah. learning conducive or they have four siblings at home who also do remote learning, like yeah. you're concerned about changing the name of George Washington Middle School or something. Right. I don't know. That was one of them. I think actually my favorite was. They were going to change Diane Feinstein Elementary. Yeah, school, who's who's like a, for I don't know why, but she's like a liberal yeah. Democrat senator. Senator, I believe. Yeah, she's a senator of California, yeah. and she I think she was the mayor of San Francisco at one time. That's why I she has school so. named after. Her. Yeah. What, what like what's the, I mean she and she definitely got Robespierre to to bring that in you know yeah, this is yeah. one of our segments Robespierre of the week right. like I, I do think though they did survive like they yeah. didn't actually go through with that but only because of backlash and outrage right and it was 44 went, schools 44 schools that they wanted to change the names for and San Francisco is a very small city um, it is people so, don't realize that San Francisco I don't know, yeah. is tiny it's tiny it's but five, it's, it's 500,000 people it's, it's dense just this as fuck nub though, so. at the tip of that what was that it's yes, dense it's, as hell, so it feels and it's, big, but it's and like, it's culturally significant. It's yeah, yeah. um it's beautiful. I mean, I don't know, I've never been there, but it's yeah. I mean, my dad is like a pretty conservative guy now, and like yeah. grow he he was a Democrat for years. I, yeah. I he votes for both. Um, I think yeah. he's become more conservative, he gets older. Like his favorite city was San Francisco, yeah, for years. Like, even it going back to, to, really the, cool. yeah. to the 70s, I'm like, wait, your favorite city, San Francisco? He loved it because it yeah. had a had an edge to it, but yeah. it also was gorgeous and had culture. And then all of that just either became like stale and um, sterile from yeah. tech, you know, the tech takeover, or yeah. just people dumping on the on the sidewalk next to your, you know, cafe. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it kind of was the worst of both worlds, and uh, that's why you know it's so important. That's why it's in the news because another like an equivalent city of five hundred thousand people would be, I don't know. 
what's how many people are in Cleveland? Like, uh, I, th- I think I think Detroit has more than that. Yeah, and yeah. Detroit's a lot of issues. They're not in the news like this. It's yeah, it's just, yeah. I, I don't know. So hopefully this is a step in the right direction. I hope, and to go off on a legal tangent here quickly, I hope their DA, their Soros funded DA, gets uh, recalled. Also, he's up. I mean, I think I think he will. No, okay. I'm not a I'm not a gambling man, but his recall elections in June. Oh, I I think I think he's axed. I think he's yeah. done. Yeah. People are fed up to live in the city as expensive San Francisco. The yeah. thing is more expensive than New York. Yeah. And it's more expensive than L.A. Is. Oh, yeah. 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 Like it's, yeah. It's crazy. New York and L.A. So yeah. I together. I, I, so, so I bring this up to say I think this is a win. I, yeah. I think I again, I think it's on the the main issue here, which is good, is educating children. Right. Yes. Yeah. Because of that, though, because they weren't doing that, I think people open their eyes to all kind of the insanity that we cover, yeah. the, the crazy um, you know, crit bullshit, like renaming yeah. schools and, and yeah. all of that. So, so it's uh, kind of a, well, what's the word? Not a collateral, a ricochet, kind of like yeah. a ricochet yeah. win, yeah. in my opinion, because I think yeah. it'll wake up more people to that. That's why um, I want to bring it up. And uh, I, I, another good reason to talk about this too is, is the whole, like, you know, we got to get rid of history thing. There was a quote from mm. one of the, one of the fuckwits who got, who got recalled a while back yeah. and when, when, when they were, um when, when they were being questioned about changing the names of a bunch of these schools yeah um during the pandemic like that's that's the thing that you got to worry about is, is the name of a school being problematic exactly, so education yes. but right. um but but um i can't remember which which person it was but the, but the quote was something like look we're not saying that you know that, that we're going to stop teaching about you know abraham lincoln or george washington or diane feinstein um we're, we're not going to forget <laughs> about them we're, 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 we're just saying that you know we want to make the titles more inclusive and it's like oh shit like more inclusive like it's it one just... of those it's it's one of those terms that's the you know and this is just this is why words matter right yeah, that's one yeah. of our themes why yeah. words matter it's like it's like black lives matter like blm like yeah. wait you're saying black lives don't matter it's like no i'm not saying that that's obvious it's this it's the organization itself or it's the yeah. destruction that comes from, you know, the post protests and all this stuff that's yeah. hidden behind black. It's not saying that black lives don't matter. Obviously not. But so, right. so that's what they do. They say inclusive. What they mean is erasing history exactly and, right. um, you know, all this other crap. And here's but, the thing. I'm, I'm not even against like adding more. Like if it's diversity by addition, it's like, okay. Like, like if you yeah. want to rename a street or something it's like to, to uh uh at, you know after an activist or something like that it's like, okay that's fine cool but it's just like but like when you're doing when you're getting rid of george washington to replace it with yeah even max kendi or i don't know i don't know that's not one that's not somebody that they were replacing that, that, like, that will happen yeah I, I, it's bound to happen i know but it's, yeah. but it's like oh come on like we don't need like if you want to name a street after or 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 or, or, or come up with a new school and name it after him fine go for it but don't erase what's come before why do you think this is so prevalent on like the west coast why do you uh, think what, like you see old... so much of this in seattle and portland and san francisco and, and yeah. these areas like what yeah. what is it um what's his face uh bill burr has this funny it's not even a joke he was just being interviewed he goes yeah you know i always thought that i was pretty liberal but apparently if you move next to an ocean you become a jerk um, so, <laughs> so, yeah but, <laughs> but like you don't see this shit in in charleston south carolina or right in, right in jacksonville or you know uh, up up in maryland or whatever which are like yeah. that that's a maryland's a really blue state vermont even is like really progressive but it's not like this kind of this sort of crazy progressive yeah. vermont's like bernie sanders progressive right not right. not like why is it this my, sort of hyper identitarian my guess and i and i'm, and I'm just kind of uh uh you know guessing here but 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 I think that it, it, it at least in part has something to do with how, um, you know, there's been a lot of activism uh, in California, like in, in California's history. So maybe it's sort of like they see themselves as sort of like, yeah, like the hippies of the 60s, like we're the next generation of that. And it's like, maybe, yeah. I, I, I mean, I don't think it's the only thing, but I wouldn't be surprised if that's that's part of it of like, oh, San Francisco has a history of, of, of you know, well, this and that. So we're kind of continuing that in that tradition. Mm. Um Maybe that's part of it, but I don't. I don't know anything else besides I don't that know either. Because like these are like f- these were like frontier cities, like Seattle. Yeah. There's like a dark history yeah. in yeah. terms of um, you know, it's a port. Like any port cities always yeah. have a, a fun 
kind of cosmopolitan, interesting, dark side to them. Yeah. San Francisco, I know, was kind of this beacon for for others, for people yeah. that weren't part of the status quo. Yeah. Um, so so I get that, but there are a lot of cities like that that just didn't yeah. fall into this. Yeah. Maybe it's I don't know, maybe is it the combination of like really blue cities and really blue states? Probably. Maybe. I, I don't know. It's just something I was thinking about that. Yeah. Like, what? Why is it this kind of like part of the country that yeah. that yeah. that you know always seems to be in the news for this stuff? Yeah. But anyway, uh, um, real quick, I gotta take a, a righteous piss, and I'll be right back. Okay. So now I get to talk some shit about you, huh? Because usually, so usually I'm the one who has to get up for one reason or another. Usually it's a hairball or uh, the police knocking on my front door, which did happen uh, the last episode. Uh, so now I can talk some shit. So what Joe doesn't know is that I'm actually commandeering this podcast. So after this episode uh, airs, I'm going to be slipping him a pink slip, um, telling him that he's fired from from the show, and I'm going to take it in a new direction. Uh, I think that um, you know I need someone. So Joe technically technically is Mexican background, but he's too white passing so i need a for for you know dei reasons i need a more um uh less i think less white i'm trying to i'm trying to decolonize this uh this podcast and i need a less white co-host um so yeah i don't know how he's gonna take it um, there, there are other reasons that I won't get into now. I think he's coming back. Oh, hold on. All right. So okay. we'll talk about this later. Yeah. All right. Police won't come knocking on my door again. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, we're talking about, uh, yeah, getting rid of history. So um, what do you want to talk about Teddy Roosevelt? Cause I actually do have, I think a nuanced opinion on this, on this issue. Teddy Roosevelt. Yeah. All right. Uh, are you aware that the Teddy Roosevelt statue outside of the Museum of Natural History was removed? No, no. I mean, I, I, well, I think I heard a little bit about it, but I don't know too much about it. So I think it started, like like most things, actually. This didn't mm. start in the summer of 2020, but a lot of, a lot of projects, I feel like, that were in the works really got the axe uh, at that time. Yeah. I think this was one of them. So there was the whole kind of take them down movement like when i was in law school in new orleans there was the uh take them down nola movement to remove confederate statues the biggest right. one being the robert e lee statue and in, in lee circle which is mm. named after him mm. and it did come down i believe when i was there um and so this so teddy roosevelt was part of that and to to donald trump's credit he did say like well once they start taking down the confederate statues uh, the presidents are coming down next. And he was yeah. prescient in this. Now, I actually yeah. do believe that the vast majority of Confederate statues should come down. And, and mm. if you're surprised to hear that, the reason is because a lot of those went up during Jim Crow and they were big middle fingers to the um, black, popu black population who were gaining rights. Um, it was a way to say like, okay, you're free, but you're still less than. And, right, right. Uh, they, you know, for instance, I don't think Robert E. Lee even ever stepped foot in New Orleans. I think they were saying, uh -huh. like, so, so he had like nothing really to do with the city. It was just, right. yeah. Um, so I, I do understand that more. Maybe cities that have, like Richmond, I think is where he's from. Uh, I know he's from Virginia. Like that might be different. There's more context there, maybe to have a Robert E. Lee statue there. But a lot of it was just to you know give a middle finger to to black people in, in the right. south or some weren't weren't even in the south some were like in the north uh -huh. that being said teddy roosevelt was not a um white southern general or you know part of the confederacy yeah uh and his statue so he uh, i don't know exactly what his role in the museum of natural history was but everyone knows that he was this uh he created a lot of the national parks or yep. the whole department maybe i'm not sure on that he was an outdoorsman um kind of embodied the american spirit uh like american pioneering spirit yeah uh, and for whatever reason his statue was outside the museum of natural history and i actually happened to go there hmm. last month a few hmm. weeks ago yeah and they did have a whole kind of exhibit on the removal huh. uh 
and it was like it's, which i did appreciate in a way it wasn't like they just took it down it's like oh forget that was ever there like they had a whole thing about it yeah you know they had quotes from everyday new yorkers or people visiting of course they were all against the statue there were none really arguing for it. maybe some tepid things there it's like well i don't like to see statues come down but i get this one in a way i almost do and here's why this was not just a statue of teddy roosevelt and i don't know if people realize that it was a statue of teddy roosevelt on a horse and next to him on each side were um well on one side was like a native american mm. and on the other side was a like a black african like mm. um i mean I, I believe he's in like traditional african dress let's say mm. and you the argument is like well it's showing that like the white man is superior right. and um he's bringing the savages into the at that point it would be what the 20th century yeah um i don't and if that's true like that i could see the issue like i i do yeah. i do see that argument if there was a way to just remove, and I feel like this does happen, <laughs> remove the Native American and the Black and the African, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think it would be a problem at all. Like, if, if people have a problem with just Teddy Roosevelt, that's different. So, again, this yeah. is, like, the thing itself. Like, no, that's totally fine. Teddy Roosevelt was a, like a great president in many respects. Um, he's an icon. Uh, he's an American icon. And, like, he has a lot to do with the Museum of Natural History. Mm. But it is in the context of like these two non-white, subservient-looking, right. uh, submissive men next to him. Yeah. That being said, I will kind of counter my counter here. Oh. Let me pull up. <laughs> well, just again, it, it's good to just kind of look at all arguments. Let me. Yeah, see you're, you, you've gone from critical thinking to hypocritical thinking. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Gal <laughs> I'm just galaxy braining right now. <laughs> so here, so so, had you asked me, you know take it down or not you know i really recoil at any sort of taking down monuments or statues for the most part for yeah. the slippery slope argument that's usually yeah. what it is yeah um and this one i wouldn't really want to come down either but here, so here's what I, here's the quote i want to read this is from the designer sculptor designer james earl frazier and this is um so so this is his quote According to the mu museum's website, Frazier said the statue could be seen to represent Roosevelt's friendliness to all races, but he envisioned the two figures as guides standing in for the two continents of Africa and America. So in a way, you know, they're guiding America into, I guess, a more like global, I don't know if power is the right word, but like a more global player. Um hmm. And like, this is a guy in 1940. Mm. He could have come out and just said, this is to show the superiority of the white. Like it's 1940. Right, right. Right. Like if he really wanted to just be like, this is the show. And again, not in like a glib way, but he could have just been like, no, this is the show. Yeah. America being a power, bringing the non-white races into the modern world. Like that's totally yeah. something Right. A guy would say in 1940, like he wouldn't yeah, have to no. be PC. So yeah, the yeah. fact that he's not saying that, like if that is the intent of the statue, right. I do think that should be taken into account. He, sure. he's, yeah. He's, yeah. he, you know, there, he even used the term that they're guides and that Roosevelt was actually super progressive, which he was, Roosevelt yeah. was considered a progressive that his yeah. party was a progressive. Now I don't, it's a, I think it's a different term, just like, yeah. Um, you know, the Republicans in Spain were the commies, but um, yeah. the, the friendliness to all races, like that was a, that was not common back mm -hmm. then. Yeah. Um, so this, but do you look at the statue in a 21st century light, just facially looking at the statue to someone who is walking by and doesn't see Frazier's quote there, like friendliness to all races, if that's even there, I, I have right. no idea what was there. Um, yeah, you could look at it as like, okay, this is just showing the uh, white savior the, type. Thing. Yeah, the yeah. white savior type thing. So I, I don't know. I do think this was a tough one. I yeah. the bar is very high for me to say to take anything down. Like that's a high right. burden. Yeah. Should yeah. this one have come down? I probably would have still said no. Put a plaque that yeah. shows that shows the um, context of it, the intent of it. Like intent yeah. is important. Yeah. 
but I don't think it's like the worst thing that it, like I do think, for instance, the University of Wisconsin taking down just a statue of Abraham Lincoln yeah. is way, <laughs> way worse. Like just because he was shitty to native americans which like everyone fucking he was the president like yeah, yeah. his the things he did well were so much more important and his like stature in american history is so important yeah. that like that's way more like that does not even come close to reaching that burden in, in yeah. my opinion yeah what do you think yeah no i generally agree with that uh what do you think of the argument of like um Okay, how about we take down the statues, but we don't get rid of them. We we put them like in a special like museum or gallery. So it is moving. Yeah, so yeah, it's more it's moving it, rather than just. It, it's well, it is. It's moving to North Dakota actually, so Alma can check it out. Oh, no, it actually um, is. Oh, no, yeah, I, yeah, no, it I, is I, moving. I mean, like, yeah, but but I also mean like 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 you know like the the Confederate statue guys. Like, like, do we just get rid of them or do we just move them to a place where um, it's like okay, it's not represent, it's not in front of the state capitol or it's not sure. You know what I mean? I agree with that too. I, I I didn't really explore that. I I do think they get moved to like maybe a museum or something. Like I, I don't yeah. know the answer to that, but I I do think that's part even for like the city's history. Like for yeah. using New Orleans, like yeah. the Robert, like it's literally called Lee Circle, which is like a major kind of traffic circle yeah. that the streetcar yeah. you know goes goes through in yeah. um, downtown New Orleans. So. Like I would think that that would go in some museum, but I could be wrong. I didn't look into that. That for Teddy yeah. Roosevelt, that statue is going to North Dakota oh, for okay. some Teddy Roosevelt specific museum or something okay. like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you know, I just mean like 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 as a general sort of split the difference solution to this, where it's like because one yeah. side is saying leave them up, and the other per the other side is saying take them down. It's like, okay, what if we just move them so they're not like in the, you, you know, where it's like you have to go out of your way to see them. It's not something where it's like, oh, okay. it's in front of the city, uh, the mayor's office, where it's like I have to, like, it represents our city. Like, what if it's just like some place yeah. where, where um, it's still there, but you have to go out of your way to, to, to find it? Yeah, I think that's a, I, I, but I think, like, for instance, if they move Teddy Roosevelt where to like inside the museum or like Central Park or something like that, or or, or but, but, but I, I'm talking about like more extreme cases, like, 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 say, Confederate general statues, yeah, where where it's like I can see people being bothered if like a Confederate general is in front of like the state capitol or or this or like the the mayor's office, where it's like, great, yeah. this is like the symbol of our city, this guy who, but but, but if it's, okay, what if we just put it in a museum where it's like you actually have to go see it if you really want to see it. You know what I mean? I think that's, yeah, I think that is it, it's a good a argument and what, and what should happen. Yeah. Um, I do think the whole Confederate statues are, are unique in the sense that like, I mean, I'm a northerner. Yeah. To, like they were traitors and like yeah. they were the enemies of the United States in my opinion. Right. So right. we don't really put statues up of our enemies. Yeah. Um, yeah. I do think goes a lot more right. Like I, I, so I do think that there is a distinction between Confederate statues and like statues of presidents. Right. Yeah. Right? Like I do. Like in in New Orleans, there's a street named after like Jefferson Davis Boulevard. It's like a big street. Like he was the he was the president of the Confederacy, yeah, and yeah. there's just like like people li like black people live on that street. Yeah. And I do yeah. think that's kind of weird. Yeah, um, yeah, considering that we went to war with them. Yeah. Well, I'd say we like we were all Americans, and that's what civil war is. But yeah, I don't know. I, it, it is. I think it is tricky and a more delicate situation than like yeah. Abraham Lincoln on University of Wisconsin. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, yeah no, it, it it is very tricky because I mean, like there are. Uh, I mean, like the the, re the reason, or at least a big part of the reason why why Lincoln is so love today is because of you know like the emancipation proclamation so it's sort of like yeah like that we're like nobody's celebrating it for what he did to <laughs> i'm sorry do you, do you do you remember that line from the south park movie what was where, which where... <laughs> oh I'm listening where, where the, the <laughs> army like there's the black brigade or whatever and like they're gonna go in first basically being human shields and chefs yeah, like yeah. haven't you heard of the emancipation proclamation and the, and the general's like oh i'm sorry i don't listen to hip-hop yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. i hear that i always think of that yeah, but it's like it's like nobody celebrates him for what he did for, for like the bad things he did. Like, so so for me, it's it's it's, it's easy for me to be like, okay, yeah, he did some bad things, but he did a lot of great things too. So let's just celebrate. The I don't good even things. know what bad things Abraham Lincoln did. Like, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Apparently, there were like some letters where he was being racist about native. Like, so it was fucking everyone. Yeah. <laughs> like, so, yeah. like I, 
and that's not what we're celebrating him for. We're celebrating right. him for the good. Like that's anyone. Like no one. Like uh, even like Gandhi had fucking horrible things about him. Are we gonna not? So, I mean, Gandhi. There is a campaign and really cancel Gandhi. Yeah, I do think yeah. he did some fucked up things with like young girls, yeah. but he yeah. also is more important than that. And that's yeah. Yeah. that'd be hard to say to maybe one of his victims, but that's what famous yeah. people yeah. like icons are for. And it is yeah. tough. I, I get it, but we can't always reduce every single thing to like people's worst moment or worst. Right. Which I don't know. Is a maybe great segue. Yeah. It's a great segue to another thing that I wanted to talk about. Sure. H.P. Lovecraft. Um, oh, okay. So I'm sure most of you know by now, all two of our listeners, uh, mom. Yeah, I, I love those. Listen- I love those listeners. I'm, um, proud, I'm, I'm proud of those listeners. Yeah, no, thanks for hanging in. Um, and I'm, I'm sorry for all the things you had to put up with. But uh, uh, so, as you all know, I'm a big fan of the horror genre, and H.P. Lovecraft is a huge influence on me. And um, so, for a while, the World Fantasy Award—that was that, that's like the big award for fantasy, horror, sci-fi, sort of like speculative fiction. That's like that. You know, that, that's like the biggest award for in, in that in that sort of genre or, or that collection of genres um the world fantasy award was in the shape of lovecraft uh, it was it was a bust of lovecraft uh, but they got rid of oh. that they changed it in 2015 um because he was also a very racist and homophobic guy but uh mm. here's the thing he died in 1937 so his views as reprehensible as they are were pretty common in that era so what, what award was this uh the world fantasy award fantasy award okay yeah okay. um so they got rid of that uh, i believe it was in 2015 or something um no reason was given for the change and no t- details have yet been announced about what will replace lovecraft but authors including daniel jose older have expressed delight at the news and here's a here's a tweet that he put out when he when he first heard this they just announced the world fantasy award will no longer be hp lovecraft we did it you did it it's done yes um here's the thing like Again, going back to like the sort of Lincoln thing, it's like nobody celebrates Lovecraft because of his racism. They celebrate him because of his influence on the horror genre. Yeah. Um, there are a lot of big uh, and prominent artists, not just in, in fiction, but also outside. Like I know Metallica have written a few songs based on Lovecraft stories. Um, uh, you know, Sam Raimi from the Evil Dead, you know, of the Evil Dead. You know, he, he got the Necro- Necronomicon from Lovecraft, and and Guillermo Oh, really? Big, yeah, that's for that's from oh, Lovecraft. I, I didn't know that. Um, Arkham Asylum from uh, Batman, like that was that that Arkham comes from from Lovecraft. Guillermo del Toro is a big fan of Lovecraft. Sure, um, so yeah, whole, and here's the thing: all of these these big artists and creators who were inspired by Lovecraft, none of them are racist. None of them are homophobic. Like, so right. it's like yes. it's obviously yeah. that it's it's obvious that they, okay, I love I love the way I love the stuff that he wrote. I don't care for his views, but that's uh, you know the stuff that from Lovecraft that lasts today is his fiction. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so it, it, it seems stupid. And, and here's the thing, I, I like, you know, again, going, getting back to the diversity by addition argument, like if you wanted to create other busts of other our authors, that's totally cool. But instead it's like, we have to get rid of the thing because it's white male, blah, 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 racist, homophobe. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, it, what did they change the, what did they change it to? I'm not sure. Uh, I think they made it really bland. Uh, this is this is a few years ago, so I didn't really keep up with it. I was just kind of like, ah, eh, whatever. I don't. I'm, I'm done with this this topic. Mm. Is it? And it's not called. Wait, was it called the Lovecraft Award? No, no, that no, was, it was just fantasy yeah. award, and it's a bust yeah. of of Lovecraft. Okay, Lovecraft, yeah, because yeah. the horror award is Bram Stoker. Yes, the Stoker Award. Yeah, I submitted for that once. I did not win, but uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> fucking loser. Yeah. yeah. But okay, so that's fantasy. All right. Well, yeah. Again, I don't know why it's so hard to separate the art from the artist. Um, I don't either, and I I think we, uh, as an artist, I think we should always separate the art from the art, yes. <laughs> art from the artist. <laughs> Whether that's my family reading my books or, or watching, you know, uh, please separate uh, yeah. anyone out there. Um, another one that I wanted to talk about is Yale. This is from 2020, early 2020. Um, Yale University got rid of their Introduction to Art History, Renaissance to the Present course. And that was long considered to be like one of their flagship quintessential classes. Yeah. Um, and they got rid of it because 
Uh, student uneasiness over an idealized Western canon, a product of an overwhelmingly white, straight, European, and male cadre of artists. Um, rather, when there are so many other regions, genres, and traditions all equally deserving of study, putting European art on a pedestal is problematic, they said. Um, and it, so, again, <laughs> it is so. I think we're going to need, you know, like the foundation book, the foundation series, or whatever. Yeah, it is. Sci -fi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we're going to need to do that. Cause like everything's just going to get erased and we're going to yeah. need to like, just have somewhere to store all of this stuff. And eventually people will wake up from this like cultural dark age and be like, yeah. wait, those statues are actually really beautiful. Yeah. Like yeah. by those straight white men, like yeah. Yeah. Or a lot of them probably weren't straight to be honest. I think a lot of them were actually secretly gay. They yeah. couldn't yeah. be it or yeah. some could back in like yeah. the Romans and Greeks and stuff like that. That was very much uh, permitted, yeah. but um yeah, that, that's where I'm starting to see. Or, or it's just going to have to be like, you don't go to these schools for for it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I love the Yale story where, um, you know, obviously Yale was virtue signaling like a beacon in the night during the Great, great Awakening. And then someone made a petition. I was like, actually, the, the, the guy who the school is named after, whatever, Yale, mm. um, was a, like operate in slave trade so we no. should change the school and it's like and they're like whoa 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 yale has huge branding like you <laughs> change that name and then they start to pump the brakes a little it's like no i think we should change and i i signed that petition i shared mm -hmm. it i also shared uh when it goes great chief seattle the yeah. the the native man who um the city of seattle is named after owned slaves no no he owned slaves so why don't we change the name of seattle no yeah yeah, I know. That's the, that's the thing. Like, there's um, the people who, who are most in favor of of changing this stuff um, are not willing to put their their you know money where their mouth is. Like, it, 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 right down the street, there's this two story shared house, and for a while they had this big sign saying we're living on you know indigenous and colonized. <laughs> yes, land. Land they're all white land. people. They're all like these white hipsters. It's like okay, then give your house over to indigenous people. Then, like, I, I agree. <laughs> I, I i agree like I think, I, I think it's dumb but i would also be like if they did that I'd be, okay you're sticking to your principles i'll, I'll give you points I, for that. i agree i wrote an article during the great awakening that said okay. it's time white people uh we re repatriate white people to europe and possibly argentina and oh, <laughs> we well. should all go back to yeah. where we come from yeah <laughs> i i would do well in some i i would be fine in france to be honest mm -hmm. if i get repatriated to france i'd be okay with that or Spain, yeah. mm, or yeah. Italy. I could do yeah. Italy. My people. No, yeah. yeah. Germany's hey, a little tense. Uh, <laughs> um, but something I want to ask you, that I want to get your opinion on. Like, why should we? Uh, like, we keep defending the past here. Uh, why should we defend the past? So they're all dead. Like, why? Why would? Why should we defend these people? Why should we defend their work? Why should we preserve it? Oh well, I mean, it's beautiful and historic, yeah. and yeah. it shows. Um, well, so can you be more specific, like like artwork. Like yeah, yeah, Speci specifically like like, like art, like Renaissance and, artists and stuff. Yeah, well, right, just in general, and I'm being very very general, like when when I want to use the term artist, but just just like you know, like you know, because we're talking about like you know, Mozart is white supremacist, and we got to tear down yeah, that well, statue. And yeah, well, it's, first of all, it's, it's like art is the the general term art yeah. is just synonymous with culture, yeah, and. Yeah. So when we look at art in the Renaissance, um, we're looking at a time period. Now, very, very few people got to enjoy that art. Uh, like the, the art a lot of time was made for the oligarchies and the kings and queens and the you know the dukes and whatever. Um, so very, but but it's still like showing what people cared about. That's why so much of the art was about Jesus and Mary. Um, it, it one, it's, I mean, it's gorgeous. It, yeah. it, it wasn't made like that, like Michelangelo and Da Vinci. And they created things that no one had created before at a time yes. with technology that was, well, you couldn't even imagine how they do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, so one it's to enjoy the, it's, it's for enjoyment. It, yes. It's, it shows uh, culture, mm -hmm. which people are proud of. Like Italians are proud of, Da Vinci and Michelangelo and yeah. um you know countless other artists and, and those other ninja all, all, and all, and, yeah. yeah those other ninja turtles <laughs> and um 
uh, I think, you know, there's a reason that we like to see ruins when we go to other or castles or, yeah. um, you know, why people still go to the Acropolis in Greece or yeah. they go to the Colosseum in Rome. Yeah. Um, it's to see a part of history and yes. to see how what we as a species have been able to accomplish uh, different times in our in our past and yeah. how really incredible that is like yeah. you look at some of these things whether it's it's a painting or a statue or a castle or the coliseum it's like like people made that with so little right you could say well okay they made some of those with slavery fine that, that's very true sure um, yeah. but you know it, it's still special it, it's yeah. Uh, there's something called this term, actually. I'm glad you brought this up because there's this term I heard called cathedral building. You ever heard this before? No. -uh. So people like a big draw for a lot of uh, at least European tourism are like the the cathedrals, the cat, uh, the um, yeah, cathedrals and basilicas and basically houses of worship for Christianity. Yeah. And people would artists and, and artisans um stone workers whatever like they would work on a piece of this cathedral for like their entire lives yeah they would just work on this one section of a cathedral that might be in the corner that no one would really look at but the one they they were making it for god hmm. which does you know that gives you a um a little more motivation yeah. than than maybe building it for profit right and two like there was just something to, like they, they knew that they were making something that would stand the test of time like this wasn't right. putting up condos in south beach yeah um th this was uh th there was more to that and i think that is really special yes and you don't see a lot of that anymore right like most right. things now are they are made with the cheapest materials mm. possible to make yeah. the most profit yeah um that's why people love victorian homes yeah like people aren't really making that anymore yep. uh yep. You know, so I kind of got derailed here, but um, I, I think it would be a huge, it would be a, a, a gargantuan sin for us to just start removing things from like the collective consciousness yeah, yeah. because of like current views of, of maybe the artist who did right. that. Yeah, like that's yeah. we're, we're beyond that when you create a piece of art like i hope to be honest i hope my books elevate well beyond me like i hope right. that people are reading that long after i'm dead i read books yeah. from authors who have died yeah. years ago yeah and i i hope that you know whether they ever see my face or not i don't i mean if it's one book like i don't care no. like I, I and i want that to travel yeah. into future generations just like yes. you know um the statue of david still mm -hmm. you know travels into generations now and i and yeah, i think yeah. that's and i think that's like to be honest what the fuck else are we supposed to do as a species if it's not art in the broadest sense yeah like yeah. raise children find love it's like this is kind of a meaning of life type question and i don't right, think right. making art is the meaning of life but it gives life a lot of meaning Yes, yeah. and 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 I think art here. I think the better word for for what I'm saying here is culture, yeah, books, yeah. music. Like music gives you a reason to be alive. Like me, like you hear symphonies, like that is like a human a human being made that. Yeah. That should be celebrated, not nitpicked. Right, right. Um, you know, so so art in the I I consider like art like I I am just kind of an architecture aficionado. Like I yeah. love architecture i love cool homes i yeah, love yeah. uh i mean like some of this stuff that you know like we created this and it should be enjoyed and celebrated yeah. and it would be really horrible if we like erasing and like very very few things i think should ever be removed right right um and we talked about a couple of those yeah, those yeah. examples but you know i really think you know, this is this is like dark age thinking this is what yeah. like they did during the dark ages in the name of religion to remove art and forget learning and forget right. science and, and math and painting and sculpture to focus on one thing yeah, and that's yeah. kind of purity of the soul and right. now we're seeing that again with the moral purity yeah. of 
whatever you want to call this. I don't yeah, even like yeah. really calling it woke anymore. I like the term great awakening because it's funny. But yeah. like, whatever this is, this hyper identitarian moral purity, yeah. like this is its own. Is it's I'm starting to see it becoming its own sort of dark age. Yes, um, yes, that might be extreme, but I, I it's, it's it's definitely headed in that direction. No, absolutely. Um, and uh, get your Nazi jar ready because I'm going to start oh dropping some. Oh, <laughs> got it right here. No, I swear, I always I always put it to the side. <laughs> All right, let's do um, it. So uh, a while back, um, it's our Nazi jar, Joe. Oh yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> so we get to split the profits of our own of our own uh, sins. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, a few years back, uh, when I first started really paying attention to a lot of this woke stuff and 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 how, and, 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 and in particular, its impact on the arts, um, somehow I, I ended up down this rabbit hole of how the Nazis treated art um, and artists. Um, I mean, jazz was basically outlawed. Like there are stories of like jazz clubs, of like underground sort of speakeasy jazz clubs sure. around Germany. Um, and, and and not only that, but there was like this 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 concerted effort to um purify the arts like we have to get rid of the things that um are that are offensive to german feeling i think was was the exact term that they it was the exact mm -hmm. phrase that they used and so we have to celebrate art that's that's specifically germanic and celebrates the the, the military um mm -hmm. and anything that goes against that that's pacifist mm -hmm. or is jewish or or represents you know other cultures like we don't want that in, in our culture it's its um, own form of purity. It's a exactly. nationalistic purity. I think exactly, that's the, yeah. that, that's kind of the, the underlying, whether it's purity for like your soul for Christianity during the dark ages or a purity for Germanic nationalism or whatever it is, or purity of like diversity and inclusion. Like, every, you know, you can't say the wrong things. Yeah, you have yeah. to think the same way. And that's really what it is. It's not about diversity at yeah, all. Exactly. It's it's superficial diversity, but very much rigid, uh, you know, down the line thought. Um, right, right. Uniformity. Yeah, it's like today, it's it's problematic, but during during the Nazi times, it was degenerate. Like there's always like this sort of like this this thing sure, that kind of yeah. separate, you know, us yeah. like good art, good you know, uh, appropriate art, and then bad inappropriate art. Yeah, I, I should uh, look into that. I didn't I didn't know all that much about. Yeah, um, like the, the culture because Berlin had like a pretty liberal scene like that's what cabaret is about right yeah yeah like they had a pretty liberal uh scene there during um well yeah during like i guess pre 1930s germany mm -hmm. i guess it would be yeah uh, i think we're, we're we're in like a lot of the the what who are the pre-nazis like not yet nazis the uh, uh what, what uh, were they called oh fuck i forget not the wehrmacht that was the war machine um the someone's yelling at us all right not that what came before the third reich not the second reich oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> i had that one no, um what, whatever sure. that whatever that was like ernst rom and then the sa maybe that yeah. was it like before the ss i don't know i think they were all gay yeah. i think oh, they yeah. were all like like having sex with each other yeah and that was oh. the night of long knives and they all got oh. stabbed and that's kind of like the coup the takeover yeah um, i don't know if that's anything to do with what we're talking about um, but I, I, I do remember learning about that and that there's a lot of like sexual promiscuity, um, you know, amongst the ranks and they kind of like purified it. Like they got rid of all that yeah. to be yeah. more, um, you know, we could easily do a whole episode on it. Cause, cause I started, I, I planned to do like a full, uh, series, uh, like article series on medium. I think I only did yeah. the first two, but I think I, I had like eight installments planned out. Okay. It's, That's uh, cool. It's well, you already started this. Yeah, this is a while back. I, oh. I I should get back into it, but uh, we yeah, could definitely I'll... do that. Oh, and this—I don't think this is this is a Nazi jar material. This is like a legitimate, equ yeah. like equivalent, like just yeah. talking about historical Nazi jar is is more for like the Canadian government or they're Nazis. Trudeau's right. Hitler's like, right. no, he sucks, yeah. and they suck, yeah. but they're not fucking Nazis. Like that—that's right, right. Nazi jar material. Um. Yeah. 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 I, I agree with that differentiation. Um. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, so, but. Uh, I've been thinking more and more about about the preservation of the arts, and and another reason why I yeah. think we should we should continue to, pre to preserve the arts. Um, a, a couple of reasons: one, they can they still have the power to inspire. Um, like you know, I, I dabble in composing music, and um, whenever I get stuck on something, I'll pop open uh, a book of of Bach compositions, and I'll be like, oh, okay, this is interesting. So that's how he does it. Even though my my compositions sound nothing like Bach, it's sort of like okay, but like. 
yeah you, know, he, he composed something like i don't know a thousand hours worth of music so it's like that's a that's a big source of inspiration for for yeah. contemporary composers um so i mean like there's always something that, that you can learn from i mean we've got centuries and centuries of artists whose works still live on today that we can look back to and be like oh i mean or for example like um you know i'm, I'm getting into filmmaking like i can pull up a renaissance painting and be moved by it. like oh that's that's interesting like what if i were to frame uh, a, a shot similar to this painting or something like that. Sure. Like, you know, there, there are still, like, I, I hate the idea of getting rid of inspiration, of, of, of wells of potential inspiration for, for, for artists that will continue to live on. It's like, what? I just want to ask people who are on this kind of like mission, like what, what world do you envision? Like, what do yeah. you want the world to look like right. without all of this? Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't, I get like not wanting to really celebrate someone who has a, you know, a sordid history. Sure. Fine. But like, uh, to be honest, if you make something beautiful, you write a book, you direct a movie that like, that's beyond the artist at that. Like that's for us to enjoy. Yeah. And, and people, everyone's hypocrites about it. Like where's like Michael Jackson's music hasn't come off of anything. He's an incredible, like, do you believe what happened? Like, do you believe that he was a pedophile and rapist? Uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Oh. All right. I kind of, I, really I thought it was kind of assumed. Like, I, I don't, yeah. to me, it's like, okay, I'm not celebrating them. I'm celebrating thriller. Yeah. yeah. Like it's fucking thriller. Yeah. Like, like I, I'm celebrating the music. I'm not really celebrating the, the person in his private life. Yeah. yeah. Um, he might've been a monster. I don't know. I honestly right. don't. I've heard so many conflicting things. There's a, point where i was defending him and there's a point where i was like oh shit yeah i think he did this shit and then i was like wait did he i I don't know it's hard to tell but but like that's not in question right Right. no one is trying to get michael jackson's music removed people are still using michael jackson for peloton and you know zumba is that that still a thing like exercise and um uh so there's always like a i think this is kind of the free speech argument bringing it all the, we always bring back to the first amendment it's like yeah. oh okay but like it always come back to you so you yeah. want to get rid of white artist number five from the renaissance okay because of something he did well what about the singer you like when yeah. they do something you want to take down uh their music right to right. use you know the gender neutral pronoun do you want to take like so it doesn't stop. So, so we have to just let it all exist. You just let yeah. it all exist. Give context. What's the intent? We have criminal, we have crimes for a reason. Like we have, you know, crimes in the legal system for a reason and just yeah. let it all play out and let it all exist for the yeah. most part, for the vast yeah. majority of it. Of course, there are sure. exceptions, yeah. the vast majority of it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree though. I, I, I think I share your fear with this. Like, why? Like, why do you want to get rid of everything? Why do you want to cut yeah. everything down? Why do you want to right. like, it's literally, it's, it's, figurative book burning sometimes literal book burning but yeah. And, right. and yeah very much against it which um, brings me back to i'm going to plug my own saying here that you see on twitter all the time dystopian yeah. books are good for you read yes. fahrenheit fahrenheit 451 yes. you read 1984 read a brave new world read yeah. six harlots rebirth of a nation by ben delessio you're surely like read these <laughs> read these books because dystopian books are good for you yeah read the novelization for the empire strikes back i mean you know just we need that's that. not dystopia <laughs> no. um yeah no read read, read the uh the novelization for back to the future part two that's uh, pretty... <laughs> no but 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 yeah no yeah uh, um another reason that we should preserve the arts is because so many of these artists not just it's funny because when we talk about like censorship and cancel culture um you know, it, it, it usually just pertains to like the last few decades. But I think you go back centuries and centuries. Like so, like there were so many plays and works of yeah. like movie uh, uh, of, of like literature and poems and novels that that offended um, royalty. And so then their their creators either got persecuted or exiled or executed. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's been going on for a long time. So so for me, it's sort of like. You know, uh, like, you know, so many of these artists who you're trying to cancel, they suffered so you can have the freedom to say yeah. and express yourself in any way that you want. I mean, some some had to like, well, we're like put in prison. Yeah. Didn't Voltaire go to prison? Probably. 
uh, and like Shakespeare would like set things in Italy instead of England, even though yeah. he's clearly talking about England, so he wouldn't yeah. get like his head cut off. Yeah, like yeah. they really. And then you're like, well, this person said a mean thing about the Algonquin, so we have to cancel yeah. him. It's like, yeah. no, it's not how it fucking works. Yeah, yeah. Um, the play uh, uh, that Mozart's opera Le Nozze di Figaro is based on was very controversial. I, I, don't, I don't know if his opera specifically was controversial, but I know that the play that his opera was based on was controversial because um, because it was making fun of the French aristocracy and this is like the late 1700s. Mm. So it was sort of like, sure, sure. like, like in fact, it was even banned in France, I think. Um, right. So so it's one of those things like, no, like, you know, we needed somebody to come along and be like, look, we this story needs, should be told and I'm going to do it with, you know, music and dance and acting. I thought Figaro, I thought that, that was in Spain. Um, I don't know the, the exact origins of it. Um, oh. I do know is that, that not that, the Barber of Seville. Is that yeah, something different? That that that, that, that is. Um, yeah, I, I I don't know too much about the specifics of it, but I do know that yeah. like um, a lot of operas at the time were based on stories that were like passed around from sure, country to country. Yeah, and and, and and people had to be. And now you can like. I mean, for the most part, you can kind of write about and do whatever you want, which was fought yeah. for for so long. Yeah, yeah. And 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 the side that really fought for that for a while is now the side trying to to take it all back. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, no, this is beautiful. Like people were were arrested and put. Like we don't even have to go back to Shakespeare and Mozart. We can go to like the Soviet Union yeah. where. Um, the Master and Margarita by Bulgakov was like not even published no. in, during the Soviet Union. It had to be like found. And I don't know the exact procedural history of it, no. but, um, you know, tons of these stories, Kafka almost, I mean, this was more self-imposed, but he was going to throw like all of his works in the fire before mm -hmm. he died. And yeah. luckily, or he would like told his wife or friend or someone to do that. And they didn't, they like yeah. went against his dying wishes, which is kind of a big deal. And thank God they did. Yeah. Cause we yeah. wouldn't have some of these stories that Kafka wrote, which are incredible. Right. Right. Um, Arnold Schoenberg, who was an important composer of the early 20th century, he's from Germany and, and he got out of there um, when he yeah. saw what the Nazis were doing and, and he came to, yeah. he came to the U S um, and and he actually he, he was good friends with a lot of of of, of composers and, and actually had a pretty big influence on on film score uh, composing at the time, um, but it's like yeah it's like I'm you know uh, he knew it was a dangerous place for artists and he got out of there. Um, I would hate to cancel Schoenberg because you know he came from Germany like just before, even though like he's not associated but you know but he's a dead straight white man so. I'm sure that uh, 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 you know it, 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 that's that's liable enough to get you. Uh, uh, it's so canceled. it's so weird. These, it's yeah. these fucking schools have to like stand up because I think I don't think it's a majority of student bodies right. or even close to it. I think it's a few yeah. loud voices and spineless yeah. administrators yeah. Yeah. who like need to just stand up. Like, no, we're not ending the Renaissance class. Yeah. The Renaissance was in extremely important. We can also add a class on East Asian art and on African art. And we can, you know why? Because they're fucking endowments, the, the GDPs of entire countries. So yeah. why don't you just add more? And then people yeah. can pick other ones. No yeah. one's like, but like you can go to whatever class you want. Um, yes. I mean, I don't know if there's still requirements, but I, I don't think that would be one of them. Or maybe it is, but then maybe the African art is also a requirement. Yeah. And so is the art on indigenous people of Mesoamerica or something yeah. like that. I don't know. I'm like very in favor of, of, of broadening the scope of, of yeah. you know, cultural studies. Uh, should, I just don't want to do it at the expense. Be. Yeah. But I'm, I, I just don't want it to be at the expense of, of, of other things. And I um, guess going, yeah, just going back. It's just so surprising to me. Like, I remember seventh grade social studies. It wasn't even called history anymore. Where I grew up like was, Africa for like half the year, China and Japan. Mm. And that's really when I kind of, no, nah, I fell in love with Japan before that, but that was like a big, like part of, yeah. of my love of Japanese culture. Yeah. I mean, I was into it during like Pokemon and all that stuff. Yeah, that's yeah. like really was the, my, my step in the door for it, but um, anime things, but uh, you know, so it's weird to be like, we don't learn about this stuff like I did, but yeah. then again, yeah. I guess it's not representative of, of, all, right. of all schools, but and, yeah, and, and, I, and, and, we agree on that. Yeah, expanding yeah. instead of removing um and and this is kind of uh, uh springboarding off the, the 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 yale cancellation of of western you know, art history um like if somebody wanted to say 
you know, for example, that the Mona Lisa, I'm, I'm just using that because everybody knows, is familiar with the Mona Lisa. But if somebody were to say, like, if a scholar were to come along and be like, look, we need to stop teaching the Mona Lisa, it, it, stop teaching classes about the Mona Lisa because, um, you know, it's overblown, it's, it's, mm. it's, um, it's, it's overrated, and there are much better paintings from that era that are much demonstrative of, of what the culture was like. So we should stop. So, okay, fine. I'm, I'm all for upgrading and updating the curriculum if you're willing to show if you're willing to, to put in the work to say look look we need to stop teaching this thing because it's really not as important as we thought this is the other thing that we should be teaching that's fine yeah. show me the work but if you're just doing it simply because it's a straight white man it's like uh, that's yeah that's, that's yeah not, that's not a good uh, enough yeah. argument. totally it's the quality of the work now even yeah. even then i would argue so i saw the mona lisa i kind of walked by it because there yeah. were like 500 chinese tourists clogging oh, yeah. the way to it so i was like oh there it is and walked by yeah. um but uh, I don't know from an art perspective if it is yeah, yeah. the incredible pain, but like even still culturally, it's mm. the single most important piece of art of all time. Is that sure. not? I, I don't know. Like off the top Probably. of my head, I mean, it's the most like, popular for sure. It, it should be taught for that reason alone. Yeah, yeah. like it, it's six hundred years old, five hundred years old. Yeah, I think so. And and it's still like nothing has beaten it since yeah. then, and anything that came before that's all, like. Yeah. It should be taught for that reason alone. Like, sure, sure. But I mean, like, yeah. you know, uh, 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 probably a better example. I'm, uh, I get your uh, point, though. I do get Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I have some writer friends who are like, you know, Shakespeare's great, but uh, Romeo and Juliet is not that great of a play. Like, there are much yeah. better Shakespeare plays that we should be teaching. And here's yeah. why. It's like, okay, fine. Like, this is better. Like, you know, they're actually laying out, like, here's why sure. Romeo and Juliet is stupid, and here's why we should be teaching this uh, play instead. It's like, okay, fine. Like, you're actually making... Um, you know, like a scholarly, uh, it's a uh, substantive argument. argument, not based on identity. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm, I'm totally open for that kind of debate, but if it's simply straight white man, bad, it's like, okay, come on. That's, that's, that's not good enough. Yeah. Well, but, uh, I yeah. don't know. I guess we'll, I guess we'll see. Yeah. You want to, uh, want to wrap it up? Yeah. That was a good reckless, uh, conversation. That was, let's hopefully more people fight the crits, Joe. We can only yeah. hope. Yep. Let us pray. Yes. All right. Episode 23 down. All right. Uh, stay, reckless, ben, stay reckless, bro.